Hello everyone, it's been a while but here are 15 new mods available for Fortune Fabric. Now most of these mods are available for the latest version of Minecraft, but as always check the title cards for more info. Anyway, let's get into the video. Alright, so the first mod that we have is Monsters Plus. This mod adds in quite a few cool variants of regular enemies. The glow skeleton is slightly stronger than the regular skeleton and it also shoots spectral arrow. The Crystallian is basically a regular zombie, but it has the power to summon crystals from the ground to damage his enemies. The Swamp Monster and the Overgrown Skeleton use poison damage with his attacks. The Mother Lava Squid and the Hermit Abyss Walker. There are also new equipments and weapons made from the drops of the new creatures. The next mod we have is Swampier Swamp. This mod aims to overhaul the swamp biomes by adding new foliage, village, and ambient mobs into the game. There are now over 13 variants of frogs. Lily pads sink when you stand on them. The trees and swamps now have different variations instead of just a simple oak tree design. A new kind of foliage, decaying kelp, produces swamp gas which can be captured with a bottle. A gas lamp can be crafted with the bottle of gas, and the gas can also be ignited to explode by shooting a flaming projectile at it. The third mod that we have is Hunger Reworked. The hunger bar is now separated into two bars. Consumed food first goes into the upper digestion bar. Then as food are slowly being digested, the hunger bar will be filled as well. Different food will have different digestion rates, so it would be wise to experiment and find the best food to consume in different scenarios. You can get the overstuffed effect if you overfill the digestion bar. That can lead to side effects such as slowness and even vomiting. However, you can brew a particular potion to counteract this effect. Next up, we have My Village Pack. This mod adds two new villages with unique building designs. As well as three new profession blocks and professions. After that, we have the Takes a Pillage. This mod adds a few pillager structures that you can find around the world. The iron golems that you can normally find in villages have also been replaced by the clay golem. Coming up next is Organized. This mod adds two new materials, lead and silver, into the game. You can find lead ores on the Y-40 in most biomes, and also in these giant boulders which you can find in plains and meadow biomes. You can melt the lead blocks into molten lead by placing it inside a burning cauldron. The melted lead doesn't really do much besides damaging entities and making cool parkour courses. You can craft a bush hammer using the lead ingot, which can be used to carve letters into stones and mostly bricks. The lead ingots can also be used to craft crystal glasses, which looks great as windows. Silver ingots on the other hand are quite hard to obtain, but Revengers may occasionally drop them. You can combine 5 silver ingots with 3 golden ingots to obtain the Electrum Alloy, which can be used to upgrade your diamond armor into an alternative replacement for netherite armor. It provides speed boost to the player but offers slightly less protection value. Silver also glows up when an undead gets too close to it, so it might be useful for you to craft a mirror for when you're exploring. Spells and Shields is an interesting magic mod that allows players to use unique spells through leveling up and unlocking new skills. To do this, you first need to have access to a vanilla enchanting table. From there, you can access the skill trees and start unlocking spells and spending experience points. Once you learn the spell, you can equip the spell and trigger it with the assigned hotkey. Keep in mind that each spell uses mana and some uses items as well. There are enchantments that increase maximum mana and mana regeneration, so overall it's a really interesting and original magic mod. Next up, we have Nether Death's update. This mod adds a bunch of new faunas in the sea of lava within Nether. You can craft a new fishing rod that specializes in fishing these new creatures. This mod also adds a new type of sponge that can be used to absorb lava. It can be dried and reused once it's placed in water. Alright, after that we have Combat Row. 
This mod simply adds a dodge button for the player to use. You can use this once every few seconds, and there is a pretty nice animation for the dodge rolls. There are a few enchantments that you can add to your equipments to lower the cooldown and to improve your dodge. It's worth noting that this mod is made by the same mod developer who made the better combat mod. So these two mods are basically compatible and even meant to be used together. Evocation and Annihilation adds two new creatures into the game, the Cultus and the Imp. There are also new curses which you can obtain via the cursing table. Alright, after that we have Tameable Beast. This mod adds quite a few passive or neutral creatures into the game. All of them can be tamed with certain items, and most of them have small and fun interactions available. While some of them can be ridden with a saddle. Alright, so the last posh mod that we have is Ravage and Cabbage. This mod adds a way for you to tame the Ravenger. To do so, you will first need to obtain Ravenger Milk by milking a Ravenger when stunned. Then you'll need to find a Cabbager Barn. Within it, you'll find the Cabbager and the Baby Ravenger. Feed the Baby Ravenger the milk, and once it's fully grown, you'll be able to ride it. Simple as that. The first fabric mod that we have is Useless Reptile. This mod currently adds in the Wyvern into the game. This creature can be tamed with raw chicken. You can command it to sit or stand by right-clicking it with a stick. You can call it by blowing a goat horn. Of course, the best part about this creature is that you can ride it by putting a saddle on its back. The wyvern is a very versatile ride. It can run, jump, fly, and even do two different types of attacks. I gotta say, the flying mechanic of this mod is very satisfying. Everything about this creature, from animations to the actual mechanic, is just really well done. The next fabric mod that we have is Mariam Souls Like Weaponry. This mod currently adds three new structures the Decaying Kingdom, Champion's Grave, and the Corrupted Moon Altar. Each of these structures has its own bosses, and the bosses have a series of unique attacks and animations. If you manage to defeat them, they drop a list of amazing weapons that are also compatible with the better combat mod as well. The last mod that we have is by design. This mod overhauls the visuals of bows and crossbows so that the projectiles have a 3D model instead. Quite a small but nice visual change in my opinion. So yeah, that's about it. Let me know which one was your favorite and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!